So a friend of mine actually reached out to me like a week or so ago and she was just sharing like her, her grandmother um, sold like their family home that she had inherited from her grandmother for a dollar. Um, mm. And so, um, so one, which I, I thought one, one thing that I was like, oh, these banks are terrible. So one, when, he, when she looked into it, it turns out that she was paying an interest only mortgage. I guess at one point she had taken money out. Oh, it's a like multifamily a, house. I had taken money out to like renovate, whatever. Yeah. And they had her just paying interest only for years, literally mm. tens of thousands gone, you know? Um, yeah. So, the, but thankfully the, you know, the smart thing that she was able to do was hold out. Cause right now it's really hot in Jersey right now from purchasing homes. So they were able to sell the property for a significant um, amount of money, um, over a million dollars. So they were able to pay off the mortgage that the, you know, the whatever loan they had taken out against the house. And she's yeah. left with basically a million dollars that's just sitting wow. in a big bank savings account. And so my friend is kind of freaked out and it's like, what what are we supposed to do? And she and had inherited great. that for a dollar. Yeah. So when what was a great, that? What a, How long has it been? I mean, the, um, the, the, the grandmother is in her 70s, her mid 70s. Mm. And so you assume, you know, maybe 50 years ago, you know, maybe wow. because I'm assuming maybe she inherited from her grandmother when she was in her 20s or 30s, you know. Um, yeah. And so it's been in their family for a long time. And so um, and I just said, well, she said, did we do the right thing by selling it? And I said, well, here's the thing we possibly could have done is that you could have. Um, um, what is it called when you take money out of the house? Um, not a home equity line of credit, but a um, a, 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 a refi, refinance and cash, cash out, out refi. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cash out refi. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so that could, that was a possibility, you know, um, if you wanted to keep the house and then you could take that money and then do other things with it, maybe purchase another because that property was a multifamily house. Yeah. Maybe purchase another property, you know, and, you know, you could have done that. Um, and that, but, you know, the, you're, it's here now. You sold the house. There's like a million dollars yeah. floating. Granny's in her 70s. And, he, and and my friend was like, you know, everybody has obviously something to say, including the big bank where the money is. Of course, they're trying to get her to invest it with them so they can slowly drip away all her money because you know how that goes. Um, yeah. Thankfully, Granny has all her her, her faculties and it, her, and it's like, mm, no. Nah. Um, so she doesn't know what to do. It's been like it's been a few months now. So it's just sitting in that savings account. Um, my friend has been trying to, like, you know, help her, but she has Every everybody in the family has something to say, and so mm -hmm. Granny basically is like, "None of y'all rich, so how you gonna tell me to do with my money?" <laughs> <laughs> That's she one said, thing. Ask I was your like, "Friend, that that budget needs to girl." <laughs> <laughs> so I um. I'm actually going to meet, meet up with her this week. She actually doesn't live far from me, which I was like, oh, that's great. So I'm going to meet up with her this week. I told my friend at the very least to start with this is to, you know, like to move the money to a high yield, you know, it's high yield savings account that you can get. So at the very, like, are we going to offset inflation? No, but it's better mm -hmm. than the 0 0.000001% 0 000 000 000 000 that yeah. her big bank is getting her. You know, maybe you get two, two and a half percent better than nothing. I said, if, if nothing else, I think you should be able to convince her to do that. And then, but when I told him, I, I, um, I told um, my friend, I said, you know, I told her that like, um, here's the thing, your your grandmother's not wrong. Like y'all are wanting her to make all these fast moves. She actually is really smart in that I'm not making any move until yeah. I decide like th what exactly that I'm doing. I said, she's actually right that she's moving very slowly with this. And um, so next up, I told them that you should start to think about the team you're going to build. There should be some sort of financial team because there are tax ramifications for this money. Mm -hmm. And so she actually, Granny's going to be using Carlos. You know, Carlos, our fave. So Carlos does taxes oh, okay. um, for me, Mandy, and our business. Um, and so she's going to be using Carlos, which is great. You know, I said, okay, because I trust Carlos implicitly. Um, second, I said, you know, because Granny's in her 70s, you should also be thinking about um, estate planning, you mm. know? Um, and so God willing, she'll be here another 20 years, but we don't know. So estate planning will help to figure out, well, what happens when I'm not here with this money? Um, so I suggested my attorney, um, Tony Moore, who's amazing. You know, you know, Tony's my fave. And so, and then I said, um, third and probably most important, um, a certified financial planner. And I explained yeah. the difference between a financial advisor, which is basically anybody can be a financial advisor, but with a certified financial planner, you know, you have to pass, pass a certain test. You have to be, you work a certain number of years. Um, you have to be a fiduciary. And so it's just the highest tier of a financial advisor that you can get. And I suggested because granny does have some money that you don't get a, um, one that gets paid by percentage invested, that instead it's a fee-based one where you're just going to pay a yeah. fee. 
you know? And so he was like, okay. I said, so those are the three people on the team. And I said, you know, and so the two of them are good to go. The financial planner one is a little harder. So, you know, I use um, Anjali. Um, she has a company called Fit Advisors. But Anjali, as far as I know right now, is not, I emailed her, but I, as far as I know, she's not taking on new clients. But I did email mm-hmm. her to ask if she can give a referral. Yeah. You know, so that's one of the best ways if you're looking for a financial planner to like, you know, um, ask people who have financial planners, you know, how they like them and everything else. Like I interviewed Helen. So I had I interviewed like 20 financial planners when I was looking. So Helen was the one that came from (laughs) Mandy. I know I was really I was crazy. (laughs) But like but the top ones I came up with was Helen, your financial planner. Helen was excellent. I loved her. Anjali. And there was another woman named um. Uh, um, Amy something or other, Amy Irving or something like that. So I didn't choose Amy because Amy only did individual, but meaning like I needed somebody who also worked with people who had businesses. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so Amy was like, right oh, fit. she's great, but she wasn't a fit for that. I was like, okay, out, out of the 20, I loved her. She wasn't a fit. But then, then so it was between Helen and um and Anjali, and of, of course they know each other because honestly the top people in the field always know each other. And they both yeah. were like, they're both awesome. I ended up choosing Anjali um, because there was something, oh, you know why? Because Anjali was not only a CFP, a certified financial planner, she was a CPA. She's mm-hmm. a certified public accountant as well. And so she has that I was tax go- knowledge. Yes, because we were going through, and I'm still paying taxes from 2018 because mistakes I've made. So I needed mm-hmm. help with her working on, uh, uh, like, alongside my CFP my accountant that I use and, but also like looking at my finances, like my business finances and my personal finances and the tax stuff. So that is why I chose, um, Anjali because I needed that tax thing. Um, so anyway, I say all that to say that like, that's the team. Um, and so hopefully, you know, with that team, because even with my friend, I didn't want to tell this to my friend, but I want to be like, girl, granny is not wrong. Cause sis, what do you like? Yeah, you're, you're, this is not what you do. This is not what I even do. And I told because she wanted me to be the financial. Advisor. I'm like, one, well, that's not I'm not certified in that, you know, and yeah. your granny's right, because you look, you're coming to me thinking that I can do a thing that I'm not capable of doing, you know, and I'm not I'm not um, I don't have the license to do. And so like granny's actually right. And hopefully with these three people on the team, they can help granny choose what she wants to do, because I, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't think my friend listens to the podcast. Sis, if you do, I'm sorry, girl, but not sorry. I'm not going to lie. A lot of the choices that it sounds like the family is making is about like, what's going to be best for all of us, yeah. which that's, I understand, you know, and I'm not, there's, not the, there's nothing wrong with that. But honestly, this is granny's money. Yeah. Leave granny and alone. she has to be prioritized <laughs> above all else. So we yeah. have to make sure that granny has a place to live, that she feels safe, that she never has to work again, that she's fine. Um, Cause she was getting, she had a, th- the house was like a three or four family house. So um, she, you know, she was getting income from that and living off of that, you know, as well as paying off the, you know, the reverse mortgage they had tricked her into. Um, and so that to me, when I talk with granny is going to be my focus to say, here's my suggestion, which is here are the three people that are going to help you decide how best to get to what you want to happen. Now, if that's the least stuff for your grandkids or whatever, great. But if it's not, that's your business, Yeah, you know? And so, yeah, so um, it's just interesting that like, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, it felt like real life Brown Ambition, you know, like what yeah. do I do? Yeah, no, I love that. But yeah, so I mean, I, here's what I'm happy about that granny's not gonna have to work anymore and they should just all breathe the side that's of relief. That's the key. And mm-hmm. one point two million is is a lot of money, but, but when you have it. another twenty something years, and I yes. know Granny takes care of herself, and yes. I'm sure she does her walks, and she's very healthy. Um, <laughs> you need like that's that's yes. you know just enough. I feel like if you do yes. it right, yep. But if you do it wrong, that can disappear. Like it makes me think of in that documentary that um you know your documentary that you were <laughs> filmed in, Get Smart with Money, uh, streaming on Netflix now, the top forty of all <laughs> Netflix new movies. Anyway, that um Ross Mack, his makeover um mm-hmm. person. Well, I forget his name, but he was Tease. a football player. Tease. Mm-hmm. His name was Tease. Tease. The, the football mm-hmm. player who like got those, you know, million dollar contracts in the NFL and then just was like, oh dang, a couple of chains, a couple yep. of houses later. That's it. And he had like barely anything left, yeah. you know? So yeah, that's what we don't want for, for granny. Cause I was thinking, I was thinking that too. I was like, I don't know that there's going to be a lot left over for y'all. If that's what you're wanting. I just yeah. like, you know, a million doesn't do what it used to do. Yeah. You know? They need to so, just take a lesson from granny and, you know, maybe invest in some real estate and hold yeah. on to it. 
for I 50 know. years. I, I know. Granny's like, shoot, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but we go, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. I said, I can't wait to meet her and I'll give you like a, a update. I have a feeling that she's sassy because she sounded like she's sassy. Yeah. Because, you know, I feel like old black women get to that point where they're like, I say what I want. I love the fact she said, if y'all, y'all know so much about money, why y'all ain't rich? I was like, oh, she's my kind of lady. <laughs> I bet they're still going to get those birthday cards that have like a single $5 bill in it. Be like, damn it, granny. <laughs> How real. do you think she became a millionaire? Exactly. <laughs> for real. You know? Hey, 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 BA fam. We're on YouTube. Woohoo! Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also, share the channel with a friend. We're always like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.